Hi guys, hope all is well. Today I'll have a look at a book titled The Structure Works of Mahendra Raj, edited by Vandini Mehta, Rohit Raj Mahendrita, and uh, Ariel Huber. The book was published by Park Books and printed in India on coated paper by Thomson Press. I always wanted to be an engineer. Both my father and my two older brothers were engineers, and I was really fond of mathematics. I graduated in 1946 and started working in the Punjab Public Works Department, so I began my career with uh, government service. I started in Lahore when India and Pakistan were still one country. But then the partition took place and I came to India. In those days, there weren't many avenues for young men. Architecture was not known. Engineering and medicine were the two most sought after disciplines along with the army. And it was not easy to gain admission into engineering colleges. After the partition, I soon became involved in the construction of Chandigarh. And the first structural project I worked on was Le Corbusier's High Court. Jane Drew, Maxwell Fry and Pierre Janaret were stationed there at the time. Le Corbusier used to come twice a year and I was lucky enough to be working on his projects, the High Court and the Secretariat building. So I met him twice in the early 1950s. After I had worked in Chandigarh, I thought I should further my studies. And so I went to America in 1955 to pursue a master's degree in Minnesota and then Columbia University for a postmasters. After that, I went to New York and took a job with a man and Whitney who were doing the most forward-looking large span structures at the time. It was Whitney who devised methods for analyzing folded plates. I also had the pleasure of meeting Nervi when I traveled to Italy and introduced myself. I worked with some well-known architects in New York too, such as Minoru Yamasaki, who became a good friend. That's how I went from being a civil engineer to a structural engineer. In 1960, I came back to India, resigned from my previous position and started my own practice. I knew of Doshi when I was working in Chandigarh on Le Corbusier's building. I used to see these drawings that came from Le Corbusier's office in Paris. They were very stylish, with things that we couldn't decipher. We thought some Frenchman had drawn them, but then we found out it was Doshi making the drawings we were receiving. Doshi didn't stay in France for long because Le Corbusier had offered him a job working on his buildings in Ahmedabad, so he moved there. When I came back to India from America, I renewed my contact with Doshi. At the time, Charles Correa had just started his practice. He made a point to seek me out. I liked him very much. He lived in Bombay, so I started my practice there too because at the time, in 1960, there wasn't much going on in Delhi. My very first project was with uh, Charles Correa. We were all very nervous. In those days, there was no proof checking, so we double checked within our office. Dr. Vakil and I started working on the stadium with Charles, who invited his friend from MIT, Fred Taylor, to help him design it. The cricket stadium is one of the first of its kind using folded plate cantilever frame structures in India. Particularly noteworthy is the delicacy and elegance of the structure, as the thin folded plates rise from the ground to form an integral hole with the spectator stands and the 20 meter long cantilever roof. The inclined legs of the main frame and the sitting frame were cast first and the cantilever roof was cast later in segments. After completing the entire sector, the variations in the deflections at the tip were equalized by either jacking up or weighting down different folds and then casting the front diaphragm uh, connecting all the folds. The notes here show how detailed instructions on the construction procedure were transferred to the contractor who had never done a structure of this kind before. Korea and Doshi had worked abroad. All of us had had the option to stay overseas, but we had chosen to come back home. Our common objective was to set up practices here find our own roots and rise to the same stature that other countries had attained. We sought uh, an Indian idiom that expressed our ancient culture, but was in tune with uh, modern times. 
We were all idealists when we started out. Not that we aren't anymore. The Hall of Nations in New Delhi in 1971 was a competition I did with uh, Raj Reval for a permanent exhibition space. It was very challenging. It was designed as a steel space frame, but at the time there was a scarcity of steel. Many sections were unavailable, so we came up with the idea of using precast concrete elements. The joints would also be precast and bolted together. That was our competition entry. But then no contractor was willing to construct it because no one had experience in precast concrete. They felt they couldn't achieve the high level of accuracy that was required. So then we had to build the space frame from in situ concrete and devise a way to get a sufficient number of bars crossing through it. But Mr. Fuller came to visit us when the Hall of Nations was under construction. So I proudly took him to visit the space frame structure. But all he saw was scaffolding, labor, women and men hauling buckets of concrete on their heads. The place was swarming. He was furious. He said, what are you doing? If you want to make modern buildings, you have to devise modern construction techniques. I saw the model, this is an ultra modern structure, but you are following the same old techniques to build it. He was very upset. Considering the nature of the job and the very tight uh, time schedule, the architects uh, Raj Reval and uh, Kuldeep Singh and the engineer Mahendra Raj worked in very close coordination right from the beginning. It was recognized that while evolving a solution, Apart from considering planning and aesthetic requirements, honoring the structural requirements was of prime importance. This complex of exhibition halls for the 1972 International Trade Fair was planned, designed and constructed in 22 months. Its large span cast in situ concrete space frames were the first of their kind to be built in the world. The choice of shape and form of the structural system was driven by its potential versatility. It contains an enclosure with a column-free main hall of 6,700 square meters and four smaller halls adding an additional 7,500 square meters under its roof structure. A fact not commonly recognized by outsiders is that all engineering is teamwork. An individual can rarely be the sole author of a structure. So it is important to keep in mind that while we are talking about my work, it is really the work of many teams, all essential to that work that is under discussion. Almost all these projects have invented and evolved analysis and design procedures with limited or no access to computers, and more importantly, have a base in ingenious engineering intuition and judgment. Many of Raj's important works also belong to a time where inventive use of concrete as a building material was popular the world over. However, countries such as India, with lower levels of mechanization and cheaper construction and labor, allowed experimentations that Raj exploited to create artifacts that are uniquely indigenous but also remarkably global in nature. Mahendra Raj's career was defined by the great period of India's post-independence modernization, which saw a vast construction boom that changed the look and feel of a young nation. Raj is arguably India's most significant structural engineer. Charles Correa, Raj Reval, Kuldeep Singh, Louis Kahn, and Vivi Doshi are just some of the architects he collaborated with. Check out his work at your local bookstore, can visit Spazio if you're in Milan. I hope you enjoyed the content of this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.